This clinical practice guideline from Martin and colleagues in 2021 guides you through the assessment and interventions for acute lateral ankle sprains. In this video, we highlight the findings from strong and moderate recommendations, which are made from level 1 and level 2 studies. Hi, and welcome to PhysioTutors. The clinical practice guideline describes several risk factors as well as diagnostic findings that should be assessed in your patient. Modifiable risk factors are hip abductor and hip extensor weakness, poor performance on balance and hopping tests, and playing court sports. After an acute lateral ankle sprain, return to participation can be expected from as soon as one day following the sprain to a little more than three weeks, depending on the desired activity or sport. With a supervised exercise program targeting specific impairments, a faster recovery can be accomplished and it helps in the prevention of re-injury. The clinical course is influenced by age, body mass index, pain coping strategies, report of instability, history of previous sprain, ability to bear weight, pain with weight bearing, ankle dorsiflexion range of motion, medial joint line tenderness, balance, and the ability to jump and land. The reverse anterolateral drawer test, anterolateral teller palpation, an anterior drawer test can be used to confirm the diagnosis of an acute lateral ankle sprain, together with a thorough history and physical examination. The Ottawa ankle rules should be performed to exclude ankle fractures after an acute lateral ankle sprain. You can find these diagnostic tests in our assessment book. Find it at the link in the video description. The clinical practice guideline regards the following interventions as high quality. There is strong evidence for prophylactic bracing or taping to prevent the occurrence of first-time acute lateral ankle sprains, particularly in those individuals with risk factors. Compared to taping, bracing is more cost-effective. Balance exercises are strongly recommended to prevent recurrent ankle sprains, but lack evidence in the primary prevention up till now. However, balance exercises may be implemented in general training due to the potential prophylactic benefits and relatively low associated risk. Bracing combined with proprioceptive and balance exercises can be used to reduce the risk of recurrent lateral ankle sprains. Braces or taping can be used to protect the ankle in the acute phase after a lateral ankle sprain. Weight bearing on the affected ankle should be progressively initiated. In more severe sprains, short-term immobilization in a semi-rigid brace or cast below the knee may be indicated for up to 10 days, but no more, following the lateral ankle sprain. Exercises for active range of motion, stretching, neuromuscular training, postural balance must be part of the rehabilitation. These exercises can be performed in the clinic and at home. Return to sedentary work should occur from two to six weeks following the ankle sprain and after six to eight weeks for more physically demanding occupations. The following table can guide your clinical decision making. Manual therapy should be used alongside exercises to reduce swelling, improve pain-free ankle and foot mobility and to normalize gait. Techniques such as lymphatic drainage, active and passive soft tissue and joint mobilization and anterior to posterior teller mobilization should be of slow velocity and within pain-free limits. To sum it up, acute lateral ankle sprains can be managed with exercise to improve range of motion, balance and proprioception. Return to work and sports can be quite fast in minor injuries and may take a while for more severe sprains or when participating in more demanding sports and occupational activities. Modifiable risk factors such as hip abductor and extensor weakness and balance can be trained to prevent recurrent sprains together with the application of bracing or taping. It is important to address the impairments in motor control, range of motion and strength along the entire kinetic chain as this may help to prevent the development of chronic ankle instability. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. You can watch a video review of the recommendations for chronic ankle sprains by clicking on the video right next to me. Check out our website 
for more physiotherapy related content. This was Ellen for PhysioTutors. I will see you in another video. Bye.